what to see, what to stream, and what to skip. It's Movie Reviews with Ryan J. That's right. We are back with my chat buddy and the nationally syndicated film critic, Ryan J. Hey, Ryan. Hey, Tap. All right, okay, so let's get into some movies because people are looking for some good stuff to watch right now. This one, the first one you have today is The Nest, and this is rated R on demand. Right, I actually reviewed this film previously, but it is was in theaters at the time. I love The Nest. It's one of the more mature, really serious, very sophisticated films of the year with great performances, and I just caught up with the star, Carrie Coon, because the film is now available starting today on demand. Take a look. Hi, Carrie. Hi, Ryan. How's Milwaukee? It's one of my old haunts. Really? It's cold. Yeah, just get her there. Yeah, sure. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah. Very cool. Well, it's nice to meet you. My pleasure. I love this movie, The Nest. I find it so sophisticated. There's so much depth and maturity to it. Did you get all that just from reading the script? Yes, because uh, a well-written script is specific. They are just so much easier to act for how good they are because everything you you need is already there on the page. This would be our fourth move in 10 Dad, years. Backwards. But money's fine, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. I love that dinner scene where Allison calls out Jude Law as her husband. She's kind of <laughs> saying where most of us would be biting our tongue. We've just bought a beautiful farm in Surrey, and we're thinking of a pied -a in Mayfair. <laughs> Do you think in that moment, is your character experiencing a breakdown or a breakthrough? Mm, that's a great question. I like to think of it as a, a breakthrough, but I also love that it reveals their intimacy because she knows him so well that she's able to turn the tables on him in that way that feels very specific to their relationship. And that's just a great example, I think, of how, uh, well, how good writing works in the script. It features some of the year's best performances. Mm -hmm. Isn't it the kind of drama where you feel like your family drama isn't as bad when you're watching this? <laughs> I think so. I mean, look, it's really revealing, right? That's why you should watch it with your partner. Art reveals things about us. Mm -hmm. And I love to share that conversation with people we love. Love that. She seems so nice, too. She is very nice, and she loves Milwaukee. She's worked in the theater scene here. And The Nest is great. It's on demand now. I recommended it then. I'm recommending it now. All right. That's a good one, then. The next one is The Last Vermeer. This is rated R in theaters. Yeah, and this movie is about uh, 1945, post-war time, and an artist is actually arrested for, felling, for selling famous painting to the Nazis, which at the time was a crime punishable by death. Oh my gosh. Okay, so it's kind of dark and moody. Did you like the look of this? I did. It's really just dripping with style. There's such lush set design, and the look of the pre- and post-war Germany is really beautiful. I don't recognize a lot of those people. Who's the cast? Well, that's uh, Guy Pierce actually as the artist. And yeah, they, he's hardly unrecognizable, hardly recognizable in the role. But he does a horrible accent in this movie. It's actually one of the worst bad accents I've ever heard in a film. But then on the other hand, we've got Clay's Bang there as the investigator. He's one of my favorite actors and he's fantastic in this. Ooh, that's a pretty scene. I like the colors and the, the as such there. Okay, so this seems and looks just moody and dramatic. Is this true? It really is, and I really enjoyed the second half. It's all courtroom drama. It's a very elegant film, and it jumps and builds, builds steadily. I don't think it's a must-see on the big screen, but I would recommend waiting to stream the last premiere. Okay, looks nice. There we go. That's that one. The next one, um, The Princess Switch, and Switched Again. This is TVG, and this is on Netflix. And I love that Hallmark, uh, you know, like Hallmark, Netflix is doing really wonderful Christmas movies now and made for TV. And what's something that like uh, Netflix can do that normally Hallmark can't is they have a bigger budget, right? So they can, they can do things like have a better soundtrack and get bigger stars. And this is a sequel to the 2018 Princess Switch. Okay, so is that Vanessa Hudgens? <laughs> Vanessa Hudgens. Hudgens. How is she in it? Yeah. She's adorable, <laughs> by the way. She's adorable, and she normally, you know, in the first one she played a dual role. She's the princess, and she's, she's the baker from Chicago. This time around, there's a third doppelganger who's the blonde evil cousin. <clears throat> ah, okay. And it looks Christmassy. It looks, it feels Christmassy. Do you like it Christmassy? I love it. It's totally never too early to get into the Christmas spirit. And I think that it's really fun. If you watch, if you, even if you didn't see the first one, it's kind of like comfort food for your entertainment soul. So I love these movies. I think Vanessa's adorable. I'd say stream this on Netflix too. Oh, cute. And you and I both love like Hallmark movies. So that's a good one. Okay. Um, the last one you have today is Leap of Faith. This is William, Ad am I saying this right? Friedkin on The Exorcist. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, he's the director of The Exorcist, which of course is the 1973 classic horror film that many consider the scariest film of all time. And what's great about this is it's like a feature length special feature you'd find on a DVD, but it's one interview with the director. So it really gets to go in depth. And he tells great stories behind the scenes, the making of what was going on at the time, adapting this from the novel, some of the challenges they had. And for anyone that's a fan of horror or a fan of The Exorcist, this is a really fascinating and insightful watch. Okay, so you liked the stories that he tells. I really did. It's better than just getting an audio track as a special feature on a DVD. This is a really fun and good in-depth look. Most documentaries feature several subjects, but this is just one with the director that's very in-depth. So it's on Shudder, which is a great streaming service for horror fans. So if you're interested in The Exorcist, check it out. Lastly, was it scary? Uh, yeah, because, you know, you're revisiting a lot of those scenes from The Exorcist. And I think that, that no matter how many times you've seen it or no matter how much the film or you age... It's still, it's still creepy. It's like, mm. <laughs> do it, do it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Now, now, now projectile vomit green. Exactly. Yeah. And turn yeah. the TV off, right? Where it gives yeah. like the weird look on it. All right. Well, thanks, Ryan. We appreciate it. Thank you, too. All right. Good to see you. And you can like Ryan J on Facebook, follow him on Instagram and Twitter. And for his full movie reviews, check out his website. It's ryanjreviews.com.